in this video i am going to talk about whether you can predict bitcoin's uh, price using time series modeling <clears throat> uh, this will be mostly on bitcoin but it's applicable to all other cryptocurrencies that whether you can use any statistical technique such as time series analysis to predict uh, the future movement of the price uh, so we will uh, talk about the theoretical aspect of it uh, of these techniques uh, as to whether uh, you know these techniques can indeed help you to predict uh, future price of uh, cryptocurrencies uh, but before that we'll try to understand a bit about uh, bitcoin and the different nuances of it and why you can or you cannot uh, predict uh, the movement of prices for cryptocurrencies um i'll take an example well this is mostly on bitcoin but it's again uh, is is uh, something that applicable to other crypto uh, as well so uh, the first thing we'll see is the the price movement of bitcoin in the last uh, one year and i have got this uh, trend graph from yahoo finance and this is a uh, one year data right just one year data so it starts from uh, january 2020 and and today is uh, 3rd of Jan uh, january 2021 so it's just one year of data and you can see that the price level is pretty constant for large part of the year the slight increase but there's a huge increase in the last three months since october question is can you uh, do uh, can you build a prediction model a time series forecasting model which can predict uh, such a movement now in time series forecasting model what you do is you take uh, a year of data and then predict a couple of months right uh, time series forecasting is uh, is reliable for short term forecasting but less reliable for long term forecasting so you would obviously forecast for 3 months or 6 months uh, into the future now can you sort of uh, predict uh, this uh, this huge shift in the price level for bitcoin now uh, if you take the, the the data from october 2019 to october 2020 and build a time series forecasting model it will never be able to predict the trend that you see after october right uh, why because such a pattern uh, didn't exist before that and if there is no such pattern in the historical data it it can no way predict the same pattern in the future because it didn't exist in the historical data now some might argue well why don't we take more data right why just take uh, a one year data right and let me show you the five year trend okay five year trend so here you see there's just once where there's a huge shift in the price right it you know like from 1000 to it went up to 15000 i think towards the end of uh, 2017 the price of bitcoin was somewhere around 16000 17000 right so there's a massive increase in in two years from 2016 to towards the end of 2017 that's just the once right but it continued to be the you know be very volatile and hovering around 10000 uh, dollar for for two years uh, until in fact more than two years uh, until october 2020 and then suddenly increase now these sudden increase once in a while is very very random there seems to be no pattern in this and it's therefore is very very difficult to predict uh, such a uh, such a movement uh, of any economic indicator for that matters not not necessarily just bitcoin it applies to other economic indicators the good thing about so, uh, so the problem with bitcoin is that it doesn't have an intrinsic value Well, many might um, disagree with me, but there is no intrinsic value of a Bitcoin, right? It's just uh, a number in the database, nothing more than that. Uh, unlike um, other, you know, commodity prices or stock prices, or yeah, to take any other financial instruments, other financial instrument do have uh, intrinsic values, uh, but Bitcoin uh, doesn't have that. Hence, it's a bit difficult to. sort of uh, rationalize through uh, you know some uh, scientific theories 
Um, so that's a bit difficult. There's too many factors involved here, and hence um, the moment is very volatile. And you can safely assume that it's more like um, more more of a random moment rather than uh, movement through any uh, proper yeah uh, macroeconomic. Um, I mean, there are some drivers driving the moment, so that's less likely. Uh, qualitative analysis might help, but quantity, on quantitative front, it's uh, the simplest uh, time series models won't be able to predict such a pattern. Uh, it's practically impossible. Uh, there are some um, ways in which it can definitely be um, predicted, not to the extent that you see uh, a like three times jump in, in a matter of a couple of months. That's practically impossible, but you can predict maybe um, a jump for a couple of percentages or so on. So, so that's something we will talk in the next few slides. Now here the lifetime uh, movement of uh, uh, Bitcoin prices and you see that um, constant for a very long time, like for the first many years up to until 27, uh, mid 2017, uh, it was less than even 2000 or 3000. Uh, for uh, for I don't know for five six years I think ever since the inception it wasn't more than that and all of a sudden for two years it went up and then with pandemic hitting slightly increase and in the last three months you see it's going up like crazy um, but such things um, do not happen um, right this happen once in a while but do not happen uh, uh, more often hence time series analysis, especially the univariate time series analysis are pretty useless uh, in predicting such a thing. Uh, some might uh, try, uh, I was going to some of the blogs, uh, people have tried even the, uh, the more of uh, machine learning techniques such as LSTM and all to predict uh, Bitcoin prices. But if you do a proper backtesting, I think, because the problem is that they haven't really shared the backtesting results and all, it won't really fit um, your data properly, especially with the changes that we have seen in the last few months. Okay, so some challenges with uh, the traditional uh, statistical analysis, in particular time series analysis. Well, it's not stock. Well, in stock also time series analysis does a very bad job, uh, but there's still some hope there. Uh, because stocks uh, of some intrinsic value, there's some macroeconomic theories uh, that explain the movement of stocks. So you can explain some theoretical models to work well there. But crypto, you know, there's nothing much uh, out there. I mean, there's not a lot of literature on crypto as to what drives crypto uh, prices. I mean, it's, um, yeah, most of the information uh, that you get on crypto is just some random movement. There's nothing really that uh, that is directly related to, you know, it's not like, um, you know, GDP is, is going up in in advanced countries, and hence crypto is going up or something. That's that's not no no such relationship as such. And then short term and long term, time series modeling um, helps in short term forecasting, but not in long term. Problem with crypto is that in short term, uh, it's you better assess yourself qualitatively rather than using some quantitative techniques. Uh, for example, during the pandemic, it was expected that crypto will do well. Um, so that's more of a short term forecasting uh, because you know we just started a couple of months back because uh, in long term forecasting where you need a bunch of lot of data uh, to uh, to help you out predicting the future here it's it's problematic because uh, um, because the pattern uh, in the historical data doesn't really help to predict future so that's another issue then too many factors driving um, the volatility, okay? Um, and most of these factors are actually not the, the traditional uh, macroeconomic uh, factors that drive, say for example, stock prices. Um, these are mostly sentiment related. These are speculations and, and things like that, you know? Um, so historical data is unable to capture such, uh, such uh, information that's, that's floating around. And then last year, the explainability. Well, time series analysis is very good when it comes to uh, explain a movement of something in, in the historical data. And that does not help, right? Because you're not interested to understand the moment, you're interested to predict the future price. So that also is of no use. It's, some, it's of some use to academicians, but if you are a practitioner, you want to 
make money out of using uh, these models then uh, of no very little use uh, however there are some things you can consider if we are more of a researcher and trying to sort of build a model uh, that will help you make maybe um, uh, making some money uh, on crypto market so first first thing is to never believe in long term forecasting models because uh, it's a bit difficult so always maybe keep a short term eye like 3 months 6 month forecast uh, probably you can uh, like for example if you use uh, last year's data and try to forecast the next 3 months uh, prices for crypto for bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies for next 3 months or 5 months 6 months probably you might have some level of accuracy there uh explore many other macro variables uh not just the historical data for crypto um but also other macro variables that might be of help so check the causality of other macro variables you try to uh, get as much data as possible about um, and to check whether uh, that helps um there's not much literature out there if that helps but you can try out qualitative analysis is very important uh, because it's mostly about sentiment so uh, quantitative analysis uh, uh, alone cannot uh, help uh, much but but if you supplement that with some sort of qualitative analysis then probably yes and then unconventional analysis is a bit um, undervalued in uh, in academic research but as a practitioner you can also uh, get data from twitter and see what people are talking about because some of the influencers on twitter and other places right on social media they also drive the crypto prices sometimes up right then quite a few actually on on twitter i come across who keep on tweeting about uh, some you know um, go all the wonderful things about crypto and then people start buying and then there's a huge demand and then it drives up the price and so on so yeah so those things also you should uh, have a look at so um so to conclude uh, it's very difficult uh, to predict the, the prices of cryptocurrencies but to a large extent you probably um can get some sort of indication if you do uh, a proper proper research but not necessarily using the traditional ways but also uh, exploring more unconventional un non traditional um ways such as twitter sentiment analysis and 